Hi, I'm Daniel. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create your own volumetric texture and how to use it in Unreal Engine 5. Before we start, you need to understand how volumetric textures work. So, instead of saving it as a volume, we're gonna slice it into many, many slices and we're gonna save it as a texture like this. So we have a UV, like a flipbook of UVs. So this is gonna be like a level 0, level 1, level 2, level 3. And with this, we're gonna build our GD volume. To make it work is very simple. All we need is just three nodes. First one is a 3D texture position, which is a flipbook of our UVs. The second one is any type of 3D noise. You can type a spacebar and a search for 3D. And you're gonna have many noises like 3D pearly noise, uh, 3D simplex noise, uh, Voronoi and others. But I'm gonna stick to the pearly noise. And the last uh, note is an output so we can export our texture. Also I have three additional notes and those are used for debug. So let's use them to see how our noise looks. Plug uh, position from cube3d gbuffers instead of 3d texture position to our pearly noise. And now if I double click on this one and single click on this one, I can move with this dot our cube and see how our noise looks. But as you can see, we cannot see the inside of this cube. If you want to see the inside, we need to do something else. So instead of plugging cube3d gbuffers, plug 3d texture position and after 3d parallel noise or any other noise you have, add 3d texture sdf which stands for sign distance field and after that 3d texture volume render. And with that we're gonna have this nice viewport and we can move our camera with this dot so we can see how our noise looks. I added a new pearly noise node so I have the default values of it and le let's check the properties. So the first one is an invert so we can just invert the colors. Oh maybe I will also plug this cube gbuffer to it so you can see it easier. Uh, so we can invert the colors then we can scale it then we can scale individual axes if we want to. Same with offset. And after that, we can distort, warp our noise to make it look more, more like a liquid. And next option is a scale of the texture that is distors, uh, distorting uh, our noise. So if it's gonna be uh, low in value, you can see like, a, like those shapes of the distortion. The baseline is like er er erosion, so if I connect again the 3D texture position and look at this debug and now uh, change the baseline you can see how it's eroding or make it look like a cheese oh, something like this and then contrast let's connect this one again with contrast uh, you can make the edges uh, harder. Then we can make it uh, the values absolute, but it's not like uh, absolute in Unreal Engine or other programs. This one uh, is not looking at the values below zero, it's looking at the values below 0 0.5, uh, as you can see here. So if the black value was like uh, 0 0.2, it's gonna be now positive number. And the last thing is a tiling. So if you want your texture to be tiling, tiled, uh, just enable it. And I highly suggest it to do it. And after that we can just export it. So here, export outputs and save it. And now we are in Unreal Engine. So here I have my texture. Let's open it. And let's look at the properties. So uh, we can change the compression setting to BC7 to have a nice quality of it. Then disable the sRGB. And uh, you can also click the compress without alpha if you are not using alpha. Then you can cl right click on the texture and click on the create volume texture. It's gonna create a new object and it's gonna look like this. 
So here is our source texture and the tile size. Uh, one very important thing, oh, oh yeah, also say, uh, ch change it to BC7 and compress without alpha, as RGB is disabled uh, already. So one important thing is, if you re-import re re your texture, it's not gonna update here. If you want to update it, you need to uh, remove this texture from here and then drag and drop it again to, to update it. Okay, now we need exponential height fog because without that it won't work. So uh, add exponential height fog, click on it and search for volumetric. And set the volumetric fog as a true. And now we can create a material. So create new material and go inside. First thing you need to do is set the material domain as a volume and the blend mode to additive. And here is a material that I prepared. I tried to keep it simple so it's easy to understand. Uh, so let's start from here. Or maybe let's start with this texture sampler. Because here I have texture sampler for uh, 3D noises. So you can just drag and drop it. And you're gonna have the similar texture sampler. And we need UVs for it. And for the UVs I did something like this. So we can we can use the local position so the noise will always stay in the same position according to our object or word position and because our noise is styled it's always gonna uh, look fine but it's not gonna move with the object so it's depend uh, on your need uh, also it's need to be divided a little more so i just added this multiply by 10 to make it uh, same size no matter if it's in a local position or word position and after that i have this switch parameter so i can change it next thing is a wind to create wind we need something like a panel but the panel is supporting only two axes so we need to create our own uh, and it's very simple so i'm taking the vector free then i'm normalizing it so here i'm setting my direction and then i'm normalizing it to keep it at the length of 1. And after that I'm multiplying it by the wind speed multiplied by minus 1. This minus 1 multiplication is because by default it's gonna be... it's gonna push the wind to the wrong direction. It's not gonna be like a x positive, it's gonna be x negative. So I'm just inverting it uh, back. And after that we are multiplying it by a time so it can move and we are adding it to our UVs. So it's gonna look like this here. After that, I'm adding detail to our noise. So uh, for that, I'm using the second noise. It's a it's a same texture, but with much frequent size. So here is uh, very similar to this part, but the frequency of this noise is much, much higher. And after that, I'm also multiplying it by the distortion intensity so I can control it and I'm adding it to the UVs of this one. So because of this, we can break the, uh, the detail on our noise. You can also subtract it, uh, second noise uh, from the first one, but uh, I mean, it's a different approach. I'm just using distort here. After that, I'm also adding the power node after my texture sampler so I can control the contrast of my noise and here the use sphere mask is a uh, okay so by default the edges of our texture of our noise uh, volume noise are gonna be very hard so you need to soft them somehow and the best way for it is to make it in a material so in my case my noise is placed on the sphere so I'm using the sphere mask for it but if it's uh, placed on a uh, on a like a box, on a cube, you, you need to make like a mask for a cube, uh, or or any other mask. Like it's work the same as the standard textures. You can even use the distance fields for it if you want to mask the uh, the fog. It's gonna be great for a like a graveyard or something. But in my case, I'm using non-sphere mask, 
So I create a sphere mask where A location is a local position of my mesh. Then I have offset if I need it. And then I have radius of my sphere and the hardness of the edges. So because of that, I can control how soft the edges of my noise will be on the sphere. And after that, I'm using this mask as a LERP alpha. So I can control the colors of our white and black spots in uh, our mask. Uh, in this example, it's very so uh, soft, but you can go like, uh, like crazy with uh, colors like green, blue or something. And also I'm multiplying it by the emissive intensity. By default, it's set to zero. But if the fog is in a, like a dark space, you can boost uh, it uh, by, by adding some em emissive to it. Also, I'm multiplying it by uh, eye adaptation inverse, so it's gonna ignore the eye adaptation uh, from the from the engine. And the last thing is uh, also multiplying it by extension. That's uh, something new. It's existing only in volumes. And extension is how much light is uh, reduced when passing through the volume. So it's not like density. It's like uh, how much light will be blocked more like this and yeah so we can control control this part uh, it's not like the value of one is not a cap you, you can set it to like a five if you want to and that's our volume i can move the camera inside of it outside and as you can see it's a sphere a little scaled oh by the way you can press the T on a keyboard if you want to select the translucent objects. And yeah, it's a it's a sphere, a little scaled on the z-axis, but uh, yeah. So uh, that's all for this video, and see you next time.